Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to the voice of the eternal gospel. We're going to continue today with this presentations on the book of Revelation. Before we do, we go there, we're going to have a word of prayer. Brother Patrick, would you lead us in prayer, please? Father in heaven, thank you for, again, this time to open up your words mm. in the book of Revelation. Amen. And we need your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds and to be our teacher. We thank you for your love to us, that, that you love us and that you rebuke and chasten us and mm. help us to turn at your, rep at your rep reproof and that we can receive the Holy Spirit more fully into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are still in Revelation chapter 3 under this church, Laodicea church, which we believe that according to the description and this is the last of the seven churches, by the way. Remember, we have been going through the, you know, all those churches prior in these programs. And uh, this is the numbers, the seventh church. Meaning this is, after this church, there is no other church, right? And from here, there will be a remnant, we should say, that will overcome sins, that will overcome evil, will overcome all the deceptions, will, will not be... Because they will be listening to the witness, to the faithful witness, and receive the medicine that is being prescribed over here. They will be then sitting in the throne of, with Christ, and they will meet Jesus when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And it is my hope and my prayer, and not only us, but all our friends uh, out there can be part of this great a church that Jesus is preparing for a soon coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, we have been talking a little bit on the conditions. Do you want to get into the... Uh, well, yes, in the last program, we were dealing about one of the uh, deception. You know, it, it's a, w what I call a, it, it's a fatal security. Fatal security. You know, because people think that they are... Because they one time experience receiving Jesus in their life, then they are going to be safe forever. And they forget that the Bible speaks very clearly that if we indeed are going to be safe, indeed are going to meet Jesus in the clouds of heaven, that we have to walk in obedience and we have to persist. We have to get the medicine. What Jesus is giving is offering to us in the book of Revelation, chapter yeah. 3. And I want Brother Patrick, Pastor Barry, while Pastor Barry will keep uh, searching in there, Deuteronomy chapter 30, okay. verse 15 to 19, Fif I think it's good to bring this to our friends. Here, verse 15, chapter 30 says, See, I have set before thee this day life, mm -hmm. and good, and death, and evil, right. in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the mm -hmm. Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, mm -hmm. so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship mm. other gods and mm. serve them, mm. I denounce you this day, that ye shall utterly perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. So the people were about to enter into the promised land, like a we, uh, Christianity, Christians, we, are, we believe that according to the prophecies, uh, we see the uh, signs, all over, and Pastor Barry, you, you were talking about yesterday about that one of the signs was to see all this terror, mm -hmm. uh, the, the terrorism, you know, taking place all around the world, the, the, the earth, yes. the world. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It, you expose, you blow very clearly that this is another science. And, and by the way, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about what we, get, we said for many years. And I need to bring this again because we have been publishing uh, a major newspaper like the USA Today, New York Times, Washington Times, the chaos and natural disasters are coming upon the earth. And then that will result into a national Sunday law that will be established. And that will be setting, setting up the enemies trying to create. When I say the enemy, who is the enemy of this world? Right. Satan, isn't it? Satan is creating through terrorism, through natural disasters, all this state of things. So in one hand, in one side, people are in terror, afraid of things to come. And very soon, I don't, I have no doubt that many people will be turning into God by fear of things to come. Not because they want to be converted. There is a difference between coming to Jesus because you know that without him you are lost, as we have discussed in previous programs. We know that we, we are in need of, of, of a Savior, as Paul put it in the book of Romans chapter 6. But the, the, to, bring it, to bring it a little bit home so you can mm. get the picture, so that people can get the picture mm -hmm. about, in, and wrapping this point up about lost, once saved, always saved briefly, mm -hmm. there is a very serious warning in Matthew chapter 7 mm -hmm. and in Hebrews. And I want to okay. just share this with you in Matthew chapter 7 because people say that once saved, always saved. And yet Jesus said something very frightening in Matthew 7, 19 through 23. Okay. He says, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit. Now, trees in the Bible represents his people. Mm -hmm. And we can find that, in t we can go that with time, but time is not on our side at this point. It says here, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. This is the same language that's used in John chapter 15, verses 5 and 6, when it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do what? Nothing. 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 And then it says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. Mm -hmm. And men gather them, and cast them to the fire, and they are burned. Now notice here, he says, Wherefore, by their fruits you shall what? Know them. He means by the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not just your fruits of work, but your mm -hmm. fruits of the Spirit, and the Spirit working in you both to will and to do. Now, in verse 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. For many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Who's he talking to? He's talking to Christianity. Mm -hmm. It says here, And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name there are many wonderful works. Don't Christianity say in the name of Jesus? In mm -hmm. the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask everything in the name of Jesus. We and do miracles. Yeah, and it says, but, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. This means you're lost. Right. Depart from me, ye that worked what? Hmm. Iniquity. Iniquity is transgression of God's law. Mm -hmm. Because if, we are, if the Christian world teaches that God's law is no longer binding, then the pastors are leading the churches into leading the congregations into transgression of God's law. If they're making them believe they can believe in Jesus and still walk in lies, steal, commit adultery, and do all the rest, then they are leading them into a transgression where Jesus says, I do not see any fruits of the Spirit in them. I see the works of the flesh, and that's contrary to my character. As a result, they are lost. Depart from me. I never knew you. And then in Hebrews 10, 27, right quick, look what the Bible says again in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27. Because a lot of people think once saved, always saved, but looking very carefully here again. In, Mar in Hebrews 10, 27, Paul put it this way, in Hebrews 10, 27, it says here, and I'll start so you can get it, for, verse 26, for if we sin willfully, hmm. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, what is the truth? Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is the truth? John 17, 17, sanctify them to thy truth, thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. What is truth? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. And what is truth? Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. So if we sin willfully after receiving a knowledge of Jesus, his word, the Holy Ghost, 
and his commandments, there remaineth no sacrifice for, uh, for sins, mm. but a certain fearful <coughs> looking at judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. So here we find that the Bible shows very clearly that if we sin willfully, there remaineth no what? Sacrifice for us. What, what sacrifice are we talking about? We're not talking about animals and sheep here. Of We're course. talking about Jesus' sacrifice mm -hmm. will not be imputed to us mm -hmm. for forgiveness of sins because we are sinning willfully against the knowledge of God's truth. Mm, amen, amen. Yes, Pastor. One point also concerning uh, once saved, not always saved, and that apply, is that it applies not only to individuals but church systems. Right. Church system. Church systems. Church organizations or denominations are not always saved, as a, the whole denomination can be uh, fall, be it, fallen from truth. Right. It doesn't matter uh, how rich, how big is a church. Well, you know, many it, many knew the truth about what the Bible says about homosexuality, and they've turned from it. Right. And it, it says here, yeah. uh, they've fallen. Yeah. Isn't that what Revelation chapter 14 speak mm -hmm. on the three angels? You know, falling, falling. Um, that, that means there were, you know, and there was a time when there might be right in the, you know, in the eyes of God, but when they reject the message that was brought, especially the message of Revelation 14, 6, then there was a message, message from heaven saying, falling, falling Babylon. They came into the state of a confusion. So yes, Brother Patrick and our friends out there, not only to individuals, but to religious institutions. And I believe that, that's, that that is another clear warning from the true witness, which is Jesus, very applicable to this uh, church of uh, the message of Bro to the church of Laodicea. Oh. Now let's talk about the remedy for a moment. You, you, we, we, we've shown now what miserable, poor, blind, naked, and by the way, being naked means you're in transgression. And being naked also means that a, a minister can lead you naked. For the Bible shows that when Aaron told the people to make a golden calf, mm. he caused the people to become naked before the Lord. Adam too. Uh, Adam and Eve, they noticed when before. they transgressed. That's right. When they disobeyed, yeah. they were naked. They were naked. That's good. And so we're going to find then that nakedness is lacking, is being unclothed. It means you're lacking something. But before we go there, Jesus gives the answer. He says, I counsel thee, buy me gold. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean? Yeah. No, I was going to say, they were found, somebody naked is in complete disobedience to God's law, okay. God's order. Uh, but, but, but being naked means something a little bit. It's, it's, it's connected to the remedy. Mm -hmm. Because if well, you're naked, you're lacking some clothing. That, that's a good point. Listen to this. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Brother Patrick, you have something to share with us in reference, in refer reference of what we have been talking about today. I'd like to read Revelation 22, 14. Okay, good. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So what is the condition that the Bible, the true witness is presenting over there in order for us? Because what does that mean to enter and to have, uh, to have rights to the tree of life. That is equal to what? Can I that's say... A, that's everlasting life. I mean, I was going to say, can, I, can somebody say, I can have everlasting life and I don't have to eat of the tree of, tree of, tree of life? No. 
No, we need that. That's a, a monthly condition that we will have in the new earth. Amen. Because we are not God. Right. And for eternity, we'll be depending on who? The tree of life will bear its fruit every month. Yeah, but for eternity, we'll be depending on God. Right. Like today, likewise. And that is the, the, the medicine that we need from the true witness today <laughs> in order for us to come out of that Laodicean condition. You know, Remember? And the medicine also, it, he want, God wants to turn us from darkness, right. to turn us from blackness, blindness and wretchedness and poorness and uh, nakedness mm -hmm. to be clothed in Christ's righteousness which is commandment keeping. God simply wants everyone on planet earth to keep his commandments by faith in Jesus. That's the whole ball game of the Bible. How simple can that be? Because that is the reflection of his character. Right? Yes. Okay. All right, Pastor Barry. Well, I just wanted to just bring out the idea that he says, buy of me, he says, I counsel to buy me gold tried in the fire. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, how do you buy from Jesus? But he said, buy gold. Hmm. So if we go to, what is gold, first of all? Go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Okay. In 1 Peter 1, 7, the Bible tells us about what gold is, okay? Okay. Let's go there for a moment. In 1 Peter 1, 7. If you have it, you can read it for me, Patrick. 1 Peter 1, 7, mm -hmm. that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. No, notice that gold is a trial of your faith, but gold is also faith and love. Mm. And I don't want to miss that because sometimes we think about faith and believing, but no, this is faith which is worked by love. This is the gold, the gold that the Bible says you've got to have. But where does faith come from? The Bible tells you in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the what? Word of God. Mm -hmm. So the trial of your faith or the trial of your belief and surrender to the Word of God is what's being talked about here. And the Bible calls it gold. Mm -hmm. So your gold is your faith. But then Jesus says something about it. He says, buy. But in, John, in Proverbs 23, 23, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. So Jesus said, buy of me. What is, who is Jesus? John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man coming to fight but by me. So buy of me means buy of Christ. And what are you going to buy from Christ? You're going to buy, what are you going to buy with? You're going to buy with faith. My man. And then the Bible says here, the Bible tells us here that faith is the word of God. So then the Bible says, buy of me gold tried into what? Fire. Meaning your belief in Christ, your faith in Christ, your, your belief that Jesus is your, is your savior your redeemer, your friend, and your king will be tried by fiery trial. 1 Peter 4.12 tells us. Look at 1 Peter 4.12. Beloved, what? Look at there for me. 1 Peter 4.12. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing happened. Now, what's going to be tried based on 1 Peter 1.7? The faith. trial of your faith. 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 So your faith will be tried by what? Fiery what? Trial. trial. And your faith is your belief in the word of God. But now, and the word faith come by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the what? Word, word, of word of God. So your faith in the word. But if the word is not in you, then when you get, when fiery trials come, hmm. you capitulate. That's when right. fiery trials come, you wither up. When fiery trials come, you begin to deny your Lord. And if you walk away yeah. from that faith and from Jesus, then you, you, you'll be lost. You'll be lost. Yeah. That's right. So the Bible tells us that, but then the Bible says, I counsel you buy me gold tried in the fire. It says that you might have on what? White raiment. Okay. Now, what is white raiment talking about? We go to Revelation chapter 19 for a moment, and we read something very important. Revelation 19, 8. Look here for a moment. In Revelation right 19, 8 says, talking about to her, talking about the church, the lamb's wife. It says, to her was granted that she should be arrayed in what? Fine linen. Fine mm -hmm. linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the what? Righteousness, righteousness of, of the saints. Uh. But what is, the, who is the, what is the righteousness of the saints? Now, first of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Amen. So Jesus is our righteousness. Jesus is our sanctification. He's our what? Redemption. But now it says the righteousness of the saints. How are the saints 
right, how, whose righteousness do the saints have? Philippians 3.9. Look at the Philippians 3.9 for a moment. Because you're going to be clothed in white raiment. Let's take a look. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. When you can read that for me. Philippians 3.9. In Philippians 3.9, I got it here. It says, and being found in him, not having my own, what? Righteousness, which is of the law. Even though we keep the law, we also know that the law itself cannot make us righteous. Right. What makes us righteous is, the, is Christ's righteousness. Amen. Christ is the reason why we are made righteous. We are not made righteous of our own selves. Mm -hmm. For our own selves, what can we boast about? We are sinful men, right. but as we yield our will to Christ, as we yield our minds to Christ, you see, this is why character is so important. When our thoughts become his thoughts, when our mind is merged with his mind, when our will becomes his will, and we live his life, this is what it means to have the righteousness of Christ. Look mm -hmm. here, it goes on, being found in him, not have my own righteousness of the law, but what? That which is through the what? Faith, Faith of, Christ. of Christ, which is what? Righteousness, which is of God, by what? Faith. 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 So this righteousness, this being clothed with what? White raiment is being clothed with the righteousness of Christ. This is the message to mm -hmm. all, the, all the Christianity. Look very carefully again in Job 29, 14. What does Job say that righteousness do? Look what he says. All right, right here. In Job 29, 14. Look what the Bible says again. You have it there? I put yeah. on righteousness and it clothed me. Wait a minute. I put on righteousness and it what? Clothed me. And it clothed me. But whose righteousness did you put on? Christ's righteousness. You put on Christ's righteousness. But what about our righteousness? Don't we have some righteousness we can talk about? Come on. Surely we got something we can boast about. Look at Isaiah 64 with me. Isaiah chapter 64. Surely we have something we can boast about and talk and brag to others that we've done something. Isaiah 64, 6. It says, but we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, what causes our righteousness to become filthy rags? Our oh. iniquities, it says, like the wind, have taken us away. Mm. Hmm. Wow. And so we find here that we have nothing to boast about. Mm. It is Christ in him alone, in his righteousness. But, we, but faith without works is what? Dead. When, Christ, when we surrender to Christ... He works in us, right. and that which we perform, that which we do in preaching or teaching, is, is to be Him working in us to do it. And if we do it, choose to go without Him, if we become self-sufficient, then He says, without me ye can do nothing, and eventually you will wither up, because now, you'll be lacking the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the condition that is found, that Jesus finds the Laodicean church, being described over here, Isaiah 64 and 6 that you read. Yes. That's the condition. Yes. The problem is, just because that's our condition, we should be moving on and accept, accept yes. the gift that Jesus, because it's Jesus who say, buy from me, go, white raiment, uh, I saw, buy from me. Why do, uh, if we wouldn't be in need of those things, Jesus will say, don't worry about it, I died for you on the cross, and you're going to be stained, naked, blind, and miserable. Mm -hmm. I will bring you to heaven like that. See, and I believe that is the point that we need to bring or remind our friends and to ourselves yes. that yes, our condition without Christ is a condition of loss. But in Christ, we will find grace that will bring us through obedience, sanctification, a new creature in Christ. And I know, Brother Pancho, you want to say something? Well, a verse in Revelation chapter 3 mm. uh, concerning the Sardis church um, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment right but, but that is a condition yes we have to overcome overcometh. right and Christ and it's right overcoming by faith in Christ and so if I ask you then now that the pastor Barry bring this up what should come first to our life the obedience or the acceptance of Christ in our life? First, your acceptance of Christ, because you cannot render <laughs> obedience to God without the acceptance of Christ. Amen. Because Amen. only God can give you power to obey through the Holy Ghost. Acts 5.32 says, we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. Yeah, I bring this up because many people, you know, misunderstand 
are mis unfortunately are misunderstanding us. And they say, you the Seventh-day Adventist believers of the Seventh-day Adventist faith, you believe and you're teaching that you are going to be saved by keeping the Sabbath, keeping the commandments. And I say, no, it's quite the opposite. We understand that we are in a miserable condition like everybody. Right. But when we receive Christ, when Christ comes into our heart, then a, a, the biggest miracle happens to a human being. We can be transformed from being a, a disobedience to being from being a, a open transgressors of God's commandment to a, a man, a woman, a young, even a child, obedience to Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? Yes. Not to be saved, but because we, by grace, have been obtaining salvation. His grace. I, I, is that okay? Yes. Did I put it okay in my... Spanglish? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Pastor Barry. No, but you said it right, because um, without Jesus, we can't. We so, have nothing to merit right. ourselves before God. And I believe that that, and that is... his merits make us worthy. Yeah, the central message of Laodicea, I think that's what it is. He says, I know your condition. You, even though you have the knowledge of the gospel, you might have know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You, you might think that just because you come following a tradition for almost 2,000 years, you think you're going to be safe? No. You are in need of the truth. You are in need of righteousness. And Pastor Barry, you've been putting very well. Righteousness is, you know, the commandments of God, the word of God. Yes, the character of Christ. The character of Christ. Yes, and the Holy Ghost in the it, life. It, it, only if we will convey this to our friends through our national radio programs, through the newspapers, full message, full page, uh, through television, through internet, I think we will, we're going to see the biggest true revival in, the, in this earth history, in Christianity. Uh, why don't we do this? I know both of you, Pastor Barry, you are ready to open, to bring your Bible. I just want to pick up on this. Is, if it is what will come automatically, what is going to be seen it, next as soon as we receive Jesus in our heart, automatically those medicines, what I call the remedies, will be applied to our life. In the meantime, God bless you all. My time is up. God bless you. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.